welcome to another episode of Sneaker Convo. I'm your host with the most Gary, aka in Gary we Trust. Glad to be back at it again. And today I have a really, really special guest. Here, here. I have the homie Drew with me. Yes, sir. And the reason why Drew is a special guest for the people that don't know, the reason why I'm into streetwear culture. Um, wait, I would say like kind of. I wouldn't say completely fashion, but you got me, you really put me into some sneaker, like, like streetwear culture. Mm -hmm. And you definitely gave me another outlook on how to style an outfit for sure. So I want to say everybody, please welcome a homie Drew to the show. The show. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Uh, I appreciate you having me on the show. Hell yeah. Um, I've known this man for quite a long time. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, we're talking about wearing Air Apostle, you know, with the Jordans. <laughs> Oh, days man you know please like, let me forget that you it go forget. It, no you can't forget that you know man <laughs> hey you had to man you had to match you know you got the shirt you got the shoes it's a fit hey bro i thought know? i was clean when i met you man <laughs> hey you were you were you know <laughs> hey could have been you could have been white boys running around in slides and, <laughs> and basketball shorts that's that's never been us yeah but how i met this guy i'm actually um I met you at the very first Got Soul event that was in Palm Beach at Renegades. Mm -hmm. And I saw you and you had on, I think you had Purple Pigeons, I think. Or Dino Jr. is one of them. I think, actually, yeah, I did you have, I had, I, had, I, I had Purple Pigeons on that day. Yeah. Purple Pigeons. And I remember you were, you were stunting too. You had on the, the preheats when they were actually heat back in the day. Mm -hmm. You're walking yep. around with those. And that, was then, when, that was when they was real, the real heats exactly for sure and then like when we, when we talked he's like oh bro i go to pv i'm like oh shit i go to pv too mm. and then next thing you know i saw this man on monday with uh he, now apparently he was wearing like sbs from back back in literally every, every day a different sb and like he literally opened my eyes to like yo there's actually more into just the sneaker you wear he had on uh diamond supply the hundreds stussy and th this is back when all that shit was fly by the way Hey, it's man, still I, it's still fly, but like this shit was hella fly. It had a then. different weight to it back yeah, then. Yeah, that shit had some weight to it. Then thirty five dollar tees, that was expensive back then. That was that was big boy talk. Talk, talk about it, bro. Talk you about know. it. Spend it. Bro, fucking billionaire in, boys club. Fucking inflation, man. Inflation. That's what it is. Shoot. Now everybody need to be dressed down in designer and shit, bro. You're like twelve years old. Take that chrome hearts off. <laughs> Yo, but of course, like let's get the show started. Uh we definitely gotta get into the fits. Um I'll go first. Um, I have on, of course, the filthy hat, filthy shirt. Shout out to Jerry. Um, I have the essential Timex watch that I actually did um, get inspired by, by the man over there as well. He did put me on the Timex watches as well. Um, I do have on the vintage Tommy Hilfiger flannel. I have on uh, khaki dicky pants cut off, of course, as you guys can see, the stance socks. And of course, one of my favorite sneakers that I bought in the last couple of years is the Nike SB What the Paul. Now, the reason why this shoe is so special to me is that I did pay way too much money for this shoe. I'm going to put that out there. <laughs> I paid way too much. But at the time that I got it was the fact that it was, I got it, I believe, the week after it came out. And I was actually in Cali. When I tell you. It just felt special. It felt right. Bro, I felt like a celebrity. People stop me like, bro, how did you get those? You got, you got them shits, bro. My bot don't work. You bro, know? literally, my, my <laughs> bot didn't work. And they said, oh, and they didn't even judge me the fact that I didn't escape. They were just surprised that they were able to see the shoe in hand, somebody wearing them. So, of course, and I definitely want to break down your fit. You definitely got a special fit over there. You definitely got some gems on your feet. So, please break down the whole fit. All right. So, I mean, since we're going to break it down, we'll, we'll, start at, we'll start at the top here, you know. Shout out, shout out to Jerry. We got the filthy beanie, you know, the Oakleys, you know, with the road prism lenses. It's be it fly fly. And they the, ain't cheap. The, the one of the one of one filthy, you know, uh, hoodie. It's real fly. Shout out to shout out to Jerry. Shout out to my boy Anthony. Anthony uh, hooked me up with this pet shirt. Real fly, you know. I pretty much uh, I try to wear you know as much of the homeboys, uh, you know stuff as possible i hear you man you, you know because you're dropping a lot of bread you might as well drop it on your homies brands <laughs> exactly and uh and number two ain't nobody flyer than we is so let's hey, get that straight say it again say you it know again, um we down we down to we got the we we got the oversized uh cyber goth pants here by uh gassed 
Y'all don't know about that. Y'all gonna go get up on that, you know, some regular regular socks since he wants to talk about socks. And then, <laughs> you know, I, I got I got these things on, um, you know. So Ooh, the Nike the Nike know, SB Dunk Low Black Cement. Oh yeah, Supreme. You already know. Yep. yep. Two thousand two. Two thousand two. This brown this brown box, you know. So now if I if I had to put an estimate on how much those things go for today, how much those go for in your size today? Uh, today, three to three to four worn. Um, you know, dead stock. Three to four what? Hundred? Thousand. <laughs> more. If you put it, if you know, if you go on StockX and go find like a dead stock pair, you're probably going to spend a, a little bit more than that. But, you know, that's, that's, gen, that's generally the area, you know, for, for where they're at. And honestly, they're, they're a cool shoe. Um, it's really the history behind the shoe that makes it kind of the worth, that, that gives it that worth. You know, uh, I don't know if, I don't know if you know, but these were the first, uh, the first um, shoe that was non-Jordan to have the elephant print on it. I did hear about that. I didn't actually, what, glad, glad that you confirmed that for me, but I did hear that rumor. Yeah, I definitely got to ask you. So obviously, obviously this is a sneaker show, but with, with, with a guest like you, I think we kind of have to talk about streetwear a lot as well, because it's like, also intertwined. Like it's, it's like, it literally, it comes in together. And like I said to everyone, you're the person that got me into streetwear. So I kind of want to ask you, what does streetwear mean to you? What does streetwear mean to me? That's a good question. Um, honestly, man, it's just what's nice about streetwear is it's just comfortable. It means comfort, you yep. know. Comfort first and foremost is something you can throw on, go fucking skate down the street, throw on, go to the mall, fucking kick it at your boy's crib. You know, you get a little dust here or there. It's no big deal. You know, you you walk around anywhere, and you know you're gonna. <laughs> You're just trying to look fly. That's it. Just being, just being fly as possible, you know. And honestly, I feel like streetwear really uh, is is kind of the home for for fly, you know. I can 100% stamp that. A lot, a lot of yeah, a lot of other uh, you know styles are maybe a little too refined, are a little too refined, and you can't call them fly. They might be nice. They got their own their own glitz to it, but it ain't. You know, literally like what's what streetwear means to me is like streetwear was probably as far as a culture. That's how I express myself without even speaking. Yeah, because I understand like streetwear today is like I know it's as a little like, like I said, it's very saturated. But like you, you can wear like a bape shirt, a Supreme shirt. But then again, now it's just like, oh, you just looked at as a hype beast. But literally back then and how we look at streetwear today is just like, oh, if depending on how, what like, the type oh, of pieces you know, they're wearing, like you're in the you're in the know, you know, but even. But even like, all right, some of these some of these brands today that may be oversaturated, like Bape. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, Bape. By the way, uh, the shit is shit is dead and gone. Uh, stop buying new Bape. But <laughs> you know, but like if someone pulls up and they got like a nice like a nice fly like Nego era fucking hoodie on, that shit is still fly. Yeah, you of know. Course. Like nowadays, yeah, they're you know it might be it might be oversaturated because they're just pumping out uh, mm -hmm. you know low quality collabs and stuff like that. And it's not even just you know Bape or you know Supreme or whatever. It's you know it's just kind of how uh, how the the market is kind of gone. You know where uh, collabs really are like uh, in control of a lot of the things thing. And now people are starting to bring uh, you know some of that high end, that more high end fashion into a, a streetwear area so then now you have like fucking three hundred dollar tees and shit but like they're and okay. they ain't any more fly than the fucking fifty dollar tee <laughs> that your homeboy is selling you know Bro. so it's kind of like a like well, literally like when i was talking about when it comes to like streetwear like there i remember there is a point in time where like streetwear became like really dead to me i would say that's like around the 2018 2019 era that's when i started to pick up thrifting and I was literally thrifting clothes for probably like two years straight. Like, like literally, sites, yeah. the mall didn't see me at all. I was just literally getting all my fits from thrift stores. But what made me fall back in love with streetwear was actually when, like, the brand that we're both of us are wearing, when I walked into the Filthy Shop, when I met Jerry, is because literally, when I walked into, into the Filthy Store, it kind of reminded me why I fell in love with streetwear. You always saw, like, a brand that you don't know where it came from. It feels very exclusive. And the shit's fly as fuck. Mm -hmm. So that's what made me really fall back into love with streetwear. It's, it, we'll see. Yeah, it's, it's, being, it's feeling like uh, 
the thing about streetwear is streetwear on its own is is like a a culture. It's a stamp. It's like mm-hmm. who's in the know and who's out and who's out of the know. And you know who's a poser quickly. You know and who yeah you know so like when you get brand you get smaller brand you get smaller brands that are you know doing fly cool shit you know it brings back that love because you're like man i'm i i got tired of you know sitting there on on thursdays at 10 a.m trying to you know trying to score a t on supreme just for the shit to fucking sell out (laughs) you know and then or if i do score the t i go out i go out somewhere and i see some other motherfucker wearing the same t you know Mm -hmm. like that shit's not cool but like it's not a big deal, but it takes away from what uh, what makes it there, and it takes away from the the griminess of what streetwear is supposed to be. Of like, hey, I made this in my fucking closet, and I just put this on and kind of wore this out. You know? Yeah, bro, streetwear became so big is that even designer brands are doing <laughs> they're doing are being doing like streetwear doing, based doing streetwear stuff. You know? All right, so getting into like some sneaker news. Uh, first, I want to get to the topic of meme sneakers. We kind of talked about it a little bit off camera, and that's actually one of the reasons on how you and we ended up shooting today is that I literally texted. I think um, I commented under like your story. You posted the uh, mm-hmm. the infamous Astro Boy boots. Yeah, the boots are fly. They look <laughs> fucking stupid, but they're fly. I didn't expect you to have this stance because I was completely anti Astro boot. Because I'm right now like I know I sound like a like a like a hating ass hype beast, mm-hmm. but like I hate shit that's controls my algorithm very quickly i feel like it's they're like force like f- like force feeding me definitely oversat- de- definitely force feed definitely <laughs> force feeding like i literally saw a miami heat meme and like about not doing a trade and the fucking little character in the meme was wearing the fucking boots like it, it's just gotten it's gotten stupid but mm-hmm. the boots are fly and i just like that People are bringing something fun and different to the table because shit's been just so serious and boring for so long. That is true. We're yeah, so quick no. to tell people that, oh, bro, you don't, you can't even dress, you can't do that. Like, what if, bro, what bro, I just want to express some stuff. Man. They're like, bro, I just want to put some big stupid boots on and walk around. Uh, like, I just hope they're comfortable. You know, they honestly, if they bet they be- that from now. <laughs> they better be comfortable. They look like they made out of straight foam. I better be walking <laughs> on a cloud. You and know? another sneaker I want to talk about. Speaking of meme sneakers, there's been like multiple sneakers that like kind of fell into this culture no matter how big the brand is you have crocs that like ended up making their own version of especially with the kentucky fried chicken collab yeah then you have even kanye himself i still consider the foam runner a meme sneaker because kanye knew what the fuck he was doing when he made a whole like a whole freaking sock shoe yeah like a 3d printed foam shoe exactly it's a clog the thing is a clog he he knew the reaction it was gonna get and now we have even bigger brands like louis vuitton getting into it and getting into like one of the the first thing I want to talk about, I don't know if you've seen the LV Trainer Maxi. Um, yeah, is that the uh, that's it's, the ones that look like the Osiris's? No, no, no. Right? That's the no. these are the ones that like that literally look like um the the actual Virgil Trainer, but they're kind of like the poofier version. I'm gonna show you right there. Okay, yeah. So they look like the regular train. What? So like it's just like a, a it's it's a, a little fat, big. like a bigger version. It's a bigger version that has like kind of like cartoon ish lace locks. I dig it. Look, honestly, mm-hmm. I'm in fa- I'm in favor of making everything bigger. <laughs> make everything bigger. Um, you know, if I could make Gary's hat like three times bigger, <laughs> I would. It would be great. You know, um, I don't think I can co-sign that one. <laughs> just like a really tall hat like a 10 gallon snapback would be awesome well that technically exists because i think like remember i don't know if you follow asap bari but like he posted like an eight thousand dollar louis freaking like sherp sherpa freaking hat that goes for like eight grand so people are realizing that like instagram pieces are becoming a thing now Mm -hmm. and they don't care about the price as long as it's really the exclusivity if you can get it and and just being well yeah but that's always been a part of it you know because everybody Mm. wants to be able to be like look i got it you don't ha ha you know, but exactly eight thousand dollars for a hat. God damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it ain't <laughs> for me. And obviously, like what makes you different from a lot of people that I know that's into like sneakers and fashion, you actually skate, <laughs> which I suck. But yeah, I skate. <laughs> hey, man, but it blew my fucking mind when you told me you actually skateboarded. Like we were literally leaving high, like high school and you said, hey, are you trying to hang out? Oh, and I'm about to go. To, I got to hit up the skate park. And I'm like. Yeah. You actually skate. Oh shit. Yeah. Like you wear thousand dollar SBs and actually do skate because it was rare. Well, yeah, like yeah, around uh, that yeah, time. Yeah, motherfuckers don't wear it. I mean, like, and I skate my <laughs> SBs too. 
Like I don't skate. I ain't gonna skate these motherfuckers, yeah, but which is a know, smart decision. But I got I got SBs that I you know that I be skating and stuff in. But yeah, no, I mean it, it's definitely another. That's that's another side of the culture because that's kind of what that whole whole thing is built off of. And it's funny too because uh, like how much SB really had a hand in uh, creating you know uh, sneakerhead culture. Because mm-hmm. before then, you know, people did, people, you know, liked, sh- liked sneakers, you know, were trying to get fly. Jordans had, you know, Jordans were fly in the 90s and stuff. You know, motherfuckers would, would you know, fight you, kill you over like a nice pair of shoes. But it was really more so just because people didn't really have shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know, like, but Jordans would, you know, go on sale, sit on the shelves back in the day, you know. But once SB kind of took uh, took off. You know the different colorways and the you know and the concepts and everything. It turned it turned sneakers into you know uh, into collectibles, in, in a way. And then from there, you know, people are like, oh, if I can collect this shoe, I can collect that one, and I want to get all of them. You know. And then next mm-hmm. thing you know, you got people like us where we're now you know we're sitting here talking about the shit for an hour. Really, and I actually want to talk about too is that how do you feel that like like skate culture, SB culture is literally making brands change the way they make clothing now. Like, I was actually going to show you, like, another shoe, the LV Skate Sneakers. Yep, yep. That's really popping right now. And yep. by the way, each, every color is sold out. Yeah, they're fuck, completely, sold, completely sold out everywhere. They got on watch wait lists and stuff. You got to pay re- resale on a shoe that already cost, you know, $1,300. Even the Cactus Jack Dior sneaker and, even and the, goes for and crazy the, money And now. the craziest part is they're literally just like a designer ripoff of Osiris D3s, yeah. you know, uh, DCs and stuff. Like if you go back and look at all these fat lace, you know, all these fat lace uh, early 2000s uh, skate sneakers, that's what they're, you know, that's what kind of a lot of the stuff is going. But that's just fashion in itself where it kind of all comes, comes and goes and all back around. Mm-hmm. You know, like back when, you know, back when I was a jit, if I saw a motherfucker walking around in pants like this, you know, like looking like they came at a hot topic, I thought that they ass was weird as fuck. <laughs> and now I'm the weird motherfucker. So it's called it's, evolution. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's evolution. You know. See, like before I even get into like, cause you brought some gems over here. I can see just by the color of the boxes. Like before I even like, before I let you um, sh- showcase them, there has been like a um a a. Say if like a line of SB, you're obviously familiar with the orange label, yeah. Um, collection, uh, pic- some pictures surface of like there's like some purple pair, but it's not really like a heat sneaker. But I really wanted to ask you is that how do you feel about SB, the um, the like the orange box or orange label? How do you feel about that collection? Oh, I think that's beautiful, honestly. Uh, I like, think- would you cop it today or are you just strictly quick, like quick strikes buying an SB today? <laughs> I don't really buy SBs today, I don't buy any really sneakers too much today, no more, just mm-hmm. because uh, something has to really be out there to really get my to get my attention. Right, I went out my way to try to get these and still failed. You know, yeah, no, I spent I spent a little bit of time looking for them and mm-hmm. then by the time like I was like, okay, I'm going to get them. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't <laughs> even want them that much anymore. Yeah, they're the cheap they're the cheapest they've been in mm-hmm. a while. No, nah, for shit, probably now, but you know, shits are fly. But, so yeah, you're so you're cool. We're, we're rocking the orange label. But yeah, no, the orange labels are great because I don't know if you know, but the orange labels are skate shops only, so they don't do okay, they don't do that. online they don't do online releases and stuff, and they're meant to be like they're meant to be essentially like for uh, the community <laughs> for 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 the skate shops and for the shoes and you know to try and help you know feed that aspect of uh, of the culture because realistically you know. Um, Skate shops and stuff are on their way out just because of you know internet and stuff like R.I.P. Shred Shed. I used yeah. to go to Shred Shed and on Saturdays whenever whenever new SB would come out and go cop. You know, the I can see that the table is burning. I'm dying to know what's in these boxes. So do you want to start off on that side and you just want to break it down? All right. So kind of what I did was uh you know he asked me to bring some stuff in here. So me being an SB head uh. You know, and mainly an older SB head. Had I brought one of uh, one one pair from each box color. You know, up until the point that I, you know, that I really stopped really caring because after blue box, it don't matter. Don't <laughs> it don't matter. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna just start at the bottom and we'll work our way from the top. So obviously we got 
we got the Supreme Lows, 2002, you know, uh, collaboration. Uh, this was back in the, or in, the, uh, in the brown box days when they were still in the Nike sportswear boxes. Um, this was right after, you know, the Pro Bs. This is kind of the first, you know, the first iteration of Nike SB. Mm -hmm. uh, original shapes and stuff uh, came after the Pro Bs. And, um, you know, there was only like a handful of shoes. And most of them are, you know, ridiculous collabs like Zoo Yorks and stuff. You got Danny Supas and, you know, all of these just real like OG uh, sneakers, OG sneakers and SBs that really kind of changed the game and built everything uh came out in that in that orange box. So okay. from there, that's going to take us oh, that's going to take us all the way back to 2003. So 2003, they released a silver box here. You know. So, and this is and this is funny because they're talking about doing a Nike sportswear on a regular dunk, uh, like a retro of some kind on these motherfuckers. We got... Oh, man. We got Heineken's, you know, and if I, I don't know if y'all know Whew. the story about Heineken's. Yo, let, me <laughs> let me get a foot. Let me get It was released, you know, released and pulled off shelves, you know, had a cease and desist put out by Heineken itself, you know, for the little star logo and the colors, you know, they called it... Uh, copyright infringement and i call it a fly ass shoe but yeah 2003 Bro. you know we we up it's very beautiful very Bro, very very very, exclu very exclusive i bought these motherfuckers for 300 dollars, you know and now they go for like 10 times that so it's very nice you know it, all the kids out there buy sneakers and hold on to them they're better investments than whatever your parents are going to tell you to spend your money on Whew. You oh, know, man, so that's a silver. That's silver box. Oh, and we got the lace bags. Whew. They need to bring back the lace bags. Damn, Stop damn, tucking them in damn. the in the shoe. It's not good. So I'm gonna leave one out. So let's yeah, see. Let's talk about the other one. All right. So then after that, you know, uh, silver box. They had this thing. So there's so many gems. Too many gems to name in uh, in silver box. And that's gonna bring us over to uh, pink box. Uh, silver box ended in like. 2004, uh, that ran 2003 to 2004, uh, and then we ran Pink Box. So coming out from Pink Box, you know, had to bring out the Tiffany's, caused quite a fucking stir. Um, these right here were my, like, fucking grail of grails back in the day. Well, not grail of grails, because that's always going to be what the dunks, and I'm so sad that I never got a chance to buy them because I was being a cheap ass when they were still cheap. Well, I don't blame you because they were back then. There was still a lot of money. Look, back then, back two, then, two grand, six six hundred dollars on a pair of shoes was a lot of fucking money. You I know, never even no, seen no, them for that long. Nobody, lot. nobody was, you know. But literally, back in you know 20, 2011, 2012, 2010, mm -hmm. under a thousand dollars all day, every day. It wasn't until uh, wasn't until more recently that they kind of uh, that they kind of jumped. And then after the, you know COVID and everybody got all that COVID money, now everybody thinks that. Uh, you know, they can get $10,000 for pairs of shoes. But if someone's going to pay for it, hey, man, why not? Yeah, I still think that's the best SB ever created. But this, yeah, this... That's my opinion. I, you don't have to say it. I, I will. Can't, I, can't <laughs> I can't disagree with you. I don't know if I would say it's the best SB ever, but I'm not going to disagree with that, with that <laughs> sentiment because this is quite literally a, a perfect shoe. And it was, the first, it was the first sneaker to use this... Uh, to use this shade of blue, and since then, at least for a meal, you know. And then since then, it's just uh, it's turned up, uh, you know, turned up all the time. You know, it's become a thing. I mean, Diamond Supply, you know, built essentially their brand on this color. Literally, you know, um, beautiful shoe, Manager Series. Uh, we love it. Yeah, we can stick that one up on here too. And don't let Gary fool you. He got a pair hanging around somewhere. I showed him on a recent episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so after Pink Box actually was Black Box, you know, but I got a treat for you guys because I got something that came out in both boxes. Now, this sneaker here was mostly known for being a Black Box shoe, but came out right at the tail end of the Black Box era um, and actually released in both the gold box and in the black box. The gold box is rarer, um, and the black box is kind of what they're most known for. Um, so without further ado, we got, got MF Dooms. 
RIP MF Doom, no, by the go, way. You, you got definitely got to give me one, one foot, bro. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no hold out on me. <laughs> Damn, MF Doom's fire. ridiculous shoe all the way. You know, you got the suit just... The details on it are just ridiculous from the, the gunmetal grayish green uh, high quality leather. And honestly, I never seen Nike ever use this leather on any other shoe right here. Um, it's got the 3M piping, you know, you got the, the custom stitching, ostrich print, you know, the super villain lace locks. I, I peed that. No, you can't forget the, the insoles you know, too. No, we got the, we got the, front, uh, the front logos there. You know, MF Doom uh, got the MF got the M mm Food uh, oh. album cover. You know, on the insoles, and then they also got the matching uh, matching outsoles oh, here yeah, too, they do. with the icy outsoles with the picture in them. Like, can I ask you? Can I ask you real quick? What was your reaction when you found out he passed away? Um, I was shocked and sad. Um, as somebody who has been a fan, you know, for quite a long time. That that shit hurt, you know. Uh, definitely was up up there up there with celebrity deaths, you know. Uh, I don't put too much stock in the celebrity deaths and stuff, but that one sucked. That one really sucked, and that one hurt. For sure, for sure, for, for sure, man. for sure. Yeah, like I, cause I remember you always used to wear these in high school, and I always knew what the shoe was, but I just. I wasn't listening to his music at the time, but I always yeah. did appreciate it because it's like mm-hmm. the story behind it. And the fact is, it's like, first of all, Nike wasn't like, giving out sneakers like that to, to especially underground sneaker, rappers. And, and especially uh, rappers, you know, that that low that low key, you know. Um, and also uh, the Quasimodo, the Quasimodo dunks mm-hmm. uh, that, that came out, the Mad Lib ones. You know, those are also absolutely ridiculous. Uh, those, those I believe, came uh, were done around the same time that they were doing this collab. Kind of just did the did it with the whole uh, with the whole label that we had that they had going on and stuff over there at that right. time. Gotcha. So let's let's see what these last two what they what they looking you know. like. So that's my that's this is my choice for my my black and gold box at the same time. You know, that is a flex. It's a two a two for one a two for one. Um, so then that brings us into blue box. Blue box, a whole lot of a whole lot of fun shoes came out in blue box. Honestly, one of the best uh, Nike SB eras. Uh, and they went for the lowest too con- at the time. Yeah, concept wise and concept wise and quality wise, you know, just uh, kind of really they were reaching their stride and, and kind of going. So we got the Cheech and Chongs here. You know, mine are a little beat up and stuff. But, Legendary shoe. You know, this is a such a fun, such a fun, interesting shoe. You know, they got the tearaway. Tearaway print. This was like, this was so new and so different mm-hmm. back when this first came out. Now every shoe, you know, is tearaway or you know has some different stuff. But when this shoe came out, this was really one of the first uh, of its kind to kind mm-hmm. of really do that, you yeah. know. And I had these customized, you know, customized done. Uh, shout out to Lil B the Bass God. I got Bass Life on these. Uh, you know, uh, got the stash pockets and stuff. Yeah, and this I, is like, and everyone was like, "Oh, the Travises have the stash pocket. We never seen it before." I'm like, bro, Nike's been like, doing yeah, this for they, a minute. They, 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 they've been doing it for a minute. Shout out Todd Bartrude, yeah, um, or Batrude. I, I don't know how to pronounce his name really well, but he he was the one that designed uh, these, designed the skunks, uh, the White Widows. Pretty uh, pretty much most of the um, the 420 releases uh, for for Nike SB, um, especially. Especially since uh, the skunks and stuff came out, you know, the kind of became known for that. Uh, I've actually spoken to him in, on Instagram once or twice. You okay. know, real, real cool, real cool dude. You can you can actually message him. He'll message you back. And yeah, that's you what know, the culture does. Real, real, real fly, real fly guy. Oh, and they got the smoke, uh, the smoke insoles and the 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 semi gum outsole. You mm-hmm. know, to kind of look like the uh, like a joint paper. You know. I very, didn't even that. <laughs> very interesting shoe, you know. Got the, um, very cool, you know. Whole lot of details. So what's this last shoe looking at? Looking so like that? this last shoe, this is not an era. This box right here is the like beige cream box, and any shoe that you see that comes in this box was not made in America, but not well, not even in, uh, you know, they're, they're Vietnamese and Korean factories I've and stuff. I've never seen that box before. Yeah. You know, this is these, these are the Nike Dunk uh, SB EMBs, which were only made in Brazil, uh, only made okay. and released in Brazil. And I have the Miamis right here. Beautiful shoe. 
ridiculously ri ridiculous quality. Um, the shape actually is a little bit different than most dunks. Yeah, these I, look newer. <laughs> you know, uh, these are, you know, I don't even remember when these came out. Let me see what, what year is it. 2005? Holy shit, has it been that long? You kept them this clean? <laughs> or you found a pair this clean? Uh, well, I bought them, I got them dead stock, and then I've worn them like three times. I've, I've worn them to a couple, a couple Dolphins games when I'm trying to look real fly, you know. But yeah. Only made in Brazil. Only made in Brazil. There's only around uh, six, like four to six hundred pairs or something like that. Uh, you know, ever made. Very rare shoe. Very cool. Um, I remember I, fin I I used to have a used pair. The like a used pair back in the day that I sold that I finessed a kid for uh, uh, at sneaker con or some shit like that. You Shiesty know, Drew. yeah, he was <laughs> he was talking about he wanted like two forty, and I was just like, bro, I'll give you like one fifty. And then I had my boy like go over there and just low. I just had all my boys go over and keep lowballing him with like different <laughs> offers, so that way my 160 offer looked really fucking good. And yeah. then he ended up selling them to me at the end of the day. And <laughs> you know, hey, it's the name. Fucked of the, up tactic, but hey, hey it man, worked. It's the name of the fucking game, yeah, yeah. bro. I'm trying to win. I'm trying to win some deals out here, man. I'm not coming out in no sneakers. It does that remind me that SB heads were always shysty back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> we was going to get our. We was going to get our pairs off of you. For you sure. Know, for we sure. Was, if you had a pair of Grails, we was going to get them off of you. But these are really cool. Um, yeah, like I said, only like four to six hundred pairs made. Um, these very the, these dunks and stuff uh, made in Brazil are all all very cool, very special. The tongues are a little bit fatter, a slightly different shape. You know, just just a real different shoe. Um, absolutely gorgeous. You know, goes for goes for some okay bread these days. Uh, all right. So one one word that we consistently used back in the day for some reason has a completely different meaning today. Uh, we used to use the word hype beast a lot. <laughs> and that's definitely a word Drew oh. used to call me every single day. What's up, hype beast? What's up, hype beast? What's up, hype beast? Mm -hmm. And back in the day, the word hype beast was like it was almost. It was derogatory. Those were fighting words. Yeah, those were literally fighting words. Like, that was an F bomb back then. <laughs> it was like, yo, <laughs> like, this motherfucker just tried me. Like, so, like, if you get called a hype beast, it's like, like all, all a brawl could have um, happened. Because you're actually, you're judging someone's character and you're kind of judging someone's, like, you, you knowledge. Call, you're calling them fake. You're Pretty just, much. You're essentially being, like, you're just fake and the only thing you the only thing you know about is whatever someone's willing to push in your face enough. So what do you view, like, the word hype beast today? Um, hype beast today? Because people are going to watch this and be like, oh, look at those hype beasts. Look at all with them hype sneakers and stuff. Hype beast today are just people that just don't have a per a personal sense of style. You okay. know, there's nothing, or even there, personality at some point. Yeah, you no, know, yeah, or even a personality is some, and you know, in some situations. But like, just really, there's no sense of personal style. You're mm -hmm. dressing, you're dressing strictly to uh, impress other people. You know, uh, in in a way. Um, I don't even believe that hype beasts exist anymore. Hype beasts are dead. Um, now we have a new breed. There's hyper beasts. Hyper beasts. You know, and it's just ridiculous. You know, there's a lot of these, you know, kids just running around. You know, uh, you shouldn't be. There's no reason to wear a three thousand fit dollar fit to school. You don't. So I, I, I not, it don't work. I have to ask you this question because someone asked me this question not the other day. Like when we were going around calling people hype beasts. So what happens if someone says, what if I'm just somebody that's trying to get with the times? How, how do you feel about that? If somebody, if you're just trying to get with the times, that's fine. I'm not saying that don't go, if you see something that you can't go, go rock it and you don't think, it, you know, if you think it's fly. It's just about putting your own spin on it. What makes, mm -hmm. you know, what makes it different from, what makes how you're wearing it different, you know, from how the next guy is. Or are you just wearing, or are you, you know, just looking at what your inspiration was and trying to copy it down to a, you know, down to a science? Mm -hmm. You know, there's no, uh, there's no mixture of your different tastes and the parts of who you are. You know, you just went and bought a fit and threw it on, you know, because you saw somebody else with a fit similar and, you know, wanted to do that, you know. Um, really, I think what sets apart, you know, hype beasts from like just regular fly ass people is just how deep are you willing to go into your own personal style and your own personal bag and just kind of like what is, what compromise, what, what comp comprises that, you know, like.
whether it's thrifted items or mm. mixing it with your hype items, mixing it with some shit you got on Amazon. You know, yeah. you know what pisses me off when people call like I get called hype beast a lot to this day to a point where it's like it's just not, nothing to me at this point. Yeah, but also I mean, granted, you run a you 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 run two podcasts based on you know uh, style and fashion. Pretty you much, know, yeah. so I. Uh, Hype Beast is a pretty uh if it's well <laughs> if it, you know it, like you might as well call it the Hype Beast Chronicles but like so all right so But one it's thing, not a bad thing. So one thing about like being called like the word Hype Beast is like the reason why like I only time I got offended is because sometimes depending on who's calling you it mm-hmm. comes off as hate. Yeah. Cuz like I was always known in like high school and even today as like oh Gary always has the newest sneaker. Yeah, you got something fly on, you know, boom boom boom, you're trying to look and do it. Exactly. That's how I always looked at it. But some people will just throw out the word just mm-hmm. as, as hate. But yeah. now hype beast is actually considered a cool thing now. Where it's like, oh, shoot, like, look at that hype beast over there. He's, he's so fly, this and that. So it's kind of like <laughs> people are kind of like misusing the word and, and stuff. But. Yeah, well, I guess it kind of just gets away from, you know, really what the... It's a term of endearment at this point. <laughs> yeah, it kind of just gets away from what the what the term originally was for, like, you know... Like it would be, you would be called a hype beast because you were beasting. You know what I mean? Yeah. You were beasting over the hype. So like something came out, you had to have it. I need that. You know, like if I don't, if I don't go get that new, if I don't have that new stuff, I saw Travis Scott wear this. Boom. I need that. Boom. Mm -hmm. Like these new moon boots. Boom. I need those. Like you're just, you're, you're ready and you're active and it's not even so much that because you like the stuff, but just because the hype has overwhelmed you so much. And that's kind of what, uh. And that's kind of what made you know what hype beast used to be about, you know. Now, now it's just become like a general broad term for anybody that wears too much streetwear. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much, pretty much. So, like speaking of like streetwear, like to close out the show, one one discussion I wanted to have with you is like, what are your shopping goals? Like, how do you shop in twenty twenty three? Like, what is like your fashion goals? Like with me, like at first, how I shop and how I shop now today is like. I'm a really. I've been really lazy lately. If if I see anything, I'll probably get it on like Depop or some shit. Mm-hmm. Or if I buy a filthy, or I'll just like, I'm a. He- I've been a heavy online shopper. I've been really lazy um lately. Yeah. Because if it's not vintage, because you don't even got to go in the thrift stores no more. You can just go on these. You go like, online. These you, go on, apps. you go on eBay and be like, I want a black motorcycle tee, and you can you know find you fifty. Find, you find fifty <laughs> Harley Davidson tees from every which state with and, the measurements, you know, so you know how it's gonna yeah, fit. Yeah, you know, like boo. Uh, Oh, this one it has a stain on the back here. Boom, boom, boom. You and know? even when it comes to like something, I one of my goals for this year, like fashion wise, I do want to wear some actually some really good denim, expensive or non expensive. I want good denim this year because we I've been having a denim crisis. Good, I, good denim, good denim is necessary. It makes the fit. All, all you need, all you need is, all you need is two or three good pairs of jeans and you're set. You know, good good jeans are always good. You know how jealous I am when I'm seeing all these people like Pharrell and these people wearing these like nice, what, like what, two, three thousand dollars Celine jeans? <laughs> Shit's look fire. I ain't gonna lie. They expensive so, as shit. So expensive. So nice. <laughs> you so, know. so how do you, how does, how, does, how does Drew shop today? How do I shop today? Honestly, uh, I either shop with the homies, you know, or I'll thrift or just look for you know uh, uh, stuff that are you know st- stuff that I'm gonna be comfortable and I'm gonna be able to you know like go and like live my life in you know I be uh, I like to go dancing and fuck and go chilling and stuff you know so I want stuff that I can go and wear you know to these kind of events and not feel like you know like I'm all stuffed up in in my clothes. Right. You know, and I'm just looking for stuff that are, you know, really kind of is fun, you know. I feel right. like clothes have gotten so uh so serious and stuff at, at a certain at, at, in a certain way that you know that there's no like fun about it. Like people aren't taking enough risks, you know. Step outside step outside the box, you know, like my biggest uh my biggest uh fashion influences like lately are literally like the cyber goths that you see in like <laughs> fucking uh, the videos doing the uh, 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 fucking dance and professional wrestlers. All right, yeah, that's actually a good mix. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> that's a fire mix. <laughs> like literally, it's just like, and then just mixing it with you know my own style of you know fly streetwear stuff. But like, if I'm gonna go buy some fly streetwear stuff, I'm shopping with I'm a shop with you know my homies. Shout out to you know. 
shout out to Dom and Graham over at uh, HYS, you know, Filthy, uh, Off the Shits. Like, there's just so many, uh, so many cool coming up brands that like are local and are your own, you know, people. And like, literally, it, it it's much cooler to put your own people on than be out wearing some shit that uh, from somebody that you'll never meet and you'll never know. Okay, shoot. Well, you know? Andrew, damn, I'm really sucks that we have, we got to go right now, but we are out of time. Um, you have been an amazing guest. I'm really, I'm really appreciate but you coming thank you on the for show. Having me. This has been fun, bro. Like I know, um, I know you, you have a life outside of sneakers, so I know it's a breath of fresh air sometimes when you talk about shoes mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah, get back into the zone, cause, uh, like, the whole sneaker community was such a, such something that we, you know, really created our relationship, but also like was such a big part of who we were, of who mm-hmm. we were, like, you know. I used to throw sneaker events. Like, I'd be in yeah, high school throwing, yeah, BB Kicks. throwing <laughs> sneaker events. Shout out to BB Kicks. Follow us on Instagram. It's still up, you know, but should be should be crazy, you know. And now, sneaker con comes around. I don't even want to go, you know, but it's just how it's just how the uh, it's just how the game and the world changes. You know, sneakers are a young man's game. Course, you man. know. you're definitely one of the definitely one of the people that got me into streetwear for sure and i just want to say thank you where can people find you if they want you to find you hey man uh drew marino uh, on instagram twitter all that stuff yeah just come follow me ladies holla <laughs> hey man well once again thank you again drew for coming on the show you're yes, always sir. welcome back you got to get you on the other podcasts uh, yeah, as well we, yeah we're gonna get on the podcast and we're gonna talk sports and life and other <laughs> bullshit and then more of this sneaker shit exactly man lit. So my name is Gary. Once again, in Gary we Trust, this has been another episode of Sneaker Convo. Thank you guys for watching. Please share, like, comment, subscribe, all that. Y'all TikTok, better. Twitter, Snapchat. I don't even be on Snapchat like that, but follow me on there. And I will see y'all on the next episode. Oh, uh, yeah. Sneaker Convo. Peace.